Kara Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today's painting focuses on soft edges and the vignette style. Vignette is a French word which describes the unique frame that is given to an image or a painting. In simple terms, it means the outsides of your painting are not linear or boxed in. They can be ragged edges or soft edges that disappear into nothingness, giving your painting a dreamy feel. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have raw sienna, burnt umber, quinacridone gold, vermilion, olive green and French ultramarine. The Canson rough paper is taped to a flat board. Heinrich uses a Wahong No. 1 hake brush to wet the paper slightly. Notice that he does not wet the entire paper and takes particular care not to go up to the edges against the tape. This will leave white spaces all around the painting to give the vignette effect. The paint will only drift as far as the water has gone on the paper. He uses the Rosemary & Co No. 8 round and Raw Sienna to start the background. He dabs a bit of paint into the moisture and then picks up some water to help spread the paint. Then he adds a touch of burnt umber. He rinses the brush and picks up the French Ultramarine. He adds little dabs of paint from the palette to form the background. Notice how the paint spreads in feathery fingers, creating soft, dreamy outlines. He cleans the brush and now uses French Ultramarine for the middle ground. Where the blue touches the wet background, the paint softly blends into each other to create interesting colors. He then uses a spray bottle to add a bit of water to help the paint flow. Don't spray too much water as it will thin out the pigment and you will only end up with a muddy mess. Spray with discretion. He tilts the board to help the flow and uses the hake to pick up some beads of water and to even out the colors. He mixes olive green with a touch of French ultramarine to make it a bit darker for the next layer of trees. He's still working wet on wet, so these trees will also disperse into the background. However, the paint here is a bit thicker, so it won't spread as much. He uses the Da Vinci Harbin Kulinski No. 2 round for this part. If you want to know more about the Harbin Kulinski brushes, have a look at our video. The link is in the description below. They are remarkable brushes. He adds some colors from the palette to bring variation in the trees.
To keep the foreground minimalistic, he adds thin lines of color. Where the paper is wet, the colors flow nicely, but where the paper is dry, it forms hard lines. He sprays the paper again to keep the paint flowing. He uses various color combinations to add some grasses to the terrain. Here he uses a bunched up paper towel to dab out a small area which will resemble the sun. To define the sun a bit more, he gently dabs in a bit of quin gold around the edge of the circle. He splatters in a few drops of clean water to form some backgrounds or cauliflowers. In this case, these water splatters will help to create more interesting shapes in the foreground. Allow the painting to dry naturally. If you use a hair dryer here, it might disturb the marks that you have already made and destroy the vignette effect. Here he mixes burnt umber with French ultramarine to create a very dark brown, almost black color. He will use this brownish black and the Chinese calligraphy brush to paint the trees. In contrast with the soft background, the trees have stark hard lines. This brings them a bit forward and also gives dimension to the painting.
The tree is not in the center of the painting. If you paint a focal point in the middle of your painting, you run the risk of splitting the painting in half from the viewer's point of view. Keeping objects slightly off-center helps to draw the eye into the painting. He adds a bit of Quinn Gold to the brown mix for the trees in the background. These trees are further away, so they need to be a tad lighter than the ones in the foreground. He adds a few more grasses to define the path a bit more. The zigzag form of the path helps to lead your eye into the painting and eventually to the little house at the back. Heinrich uses white gouache to enhance the house a bit more and then paints a very light layer over the gouache for the shadows in the building. He adds some gouache to the trees and the sun to bring back a bit of light.
This style of painting gives your composition a very unique look. It is really worth a try. Please leave a comment below if you have tried this before and let us know what you think. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Vaya con Dios.